Hey guys, if you've clicked on this video thinking that I'm going to tell you to spend less and invest more, I'm not. That's not what this video is at all. Instead, I'm going to be sharing with you some unique thoughts that I've been having about making money, building wealth, and some lies that we've all been told. I hope some of the things I share in this video prompt a thought or cause you to start thinking about different things in different ways. If so, please drop a comment and let me know what those thoughts are below. So let's just speak about the first one, which is this whole idea of valuing your time. And this has been in my mind quite a lot recently. And I'm not speaking necessarily about, you know, uh, valuing your time whereby you shouldn't be doing this and you should be doing this. I'm actually speaking about literally putting a figure, an hourly rate on your own time. For example, you could say that your hourly rate, you value your time at $50 an hour, $100 an hour, $1,000 an hour, whatever that may be. So wh why would you even do this? What is the point? Well, your time is a finite resource. It is one of those things in life that you can't just get more of. Time will go and you can't buy more of it. You can't get more of it. You don't magically unlock it as you go through life. It's a very finite resource. And how you actually go about using your time makes a massive difference to not only your daily life, but especially if you're trying to build a business or you're trying to make money. And the reason that you put a figure on it is because that unlocks information to you that allows you to know how much each hour is worth, which then importantly allows you to prioritize your time. So let's just say, for argument's sake, that you valued your time and you there's literally ways online that you can do this. So go and have a look at how to value your time and get an actual rate for yourself online. Go and have a look at that. But let's just say that you value your time at $50 an hour and you know that you can make $50, maybe even $60 an hour quite easily with little effort, whether that's in your day job, whether that's an online business, whether that's a side hustle, whatever it may be. But you then track your time on a day-to-day -day basis, on a week-to-week -week basis, and you find out that every single day you are spending an hour, maybe even two hours doing something, whatever that something may be, that you could actually outsource and pay someone else to do for $20 an hour. Now, what that means, and this is a mindset shift, what that means is, yes, you are spending money to get somebody else or a, a different way to do that thing that takes your hour or two hours. You're spending $20, but what you're actually getting back is the opportunity to make $50, $100 within the same time period. So when you deduct that $20 that you've spent and suddenly you've made $100, you make a profit of $80. Whereas if you had just done that thing that is under your your hourly rate, you would have not made that $100, if that makes sense. And once you know this figure for yourself, you will start rethinking everything you do because you will constantly be thinking, is this actually worth my time? Am I wasting my time on this thing that isn't actually even gonna make me my hourly rate? Whereas I could be putting my effort into this thing that will definitely make me my hourly rate. And another really important thing here is it's not set in stone, it's not capped. As your value, as your expertise go up, you must increase your hourly rate. Your value goes up, your figure goes up as well. And when you start doing this, and maybe you talk to your friends about it, you talk to your family about it, they probably will think that you're absolutely crazy. But this is where the next thing that I've been thinking about comes in. And this is quite brutal. And I'm not a brutal person, so please bear with me here as I explain myself through this one. This whole idea of ignoring, and I, I yes, ignoring, media, school, parents, friends. So what this comes down to is this whole idea of don't take financial advice from people who are not in the financial position that you aim to be in. It's literally don't take advice about being rich from people that aren't rich, quite simply. And then that ties nicely in with this whole idea that we've all heard a million and one times, this whole self-improvement idea of surround yourself with people that you want to become. You know, you are the sum, I don't know what it is, like you are the sum of the top five people around you or something like that. And I remember reading money advice, financial wealth building advice that people had received. And one of the ones that someone mentioned was that they were told by their mum, I think it was, mum or dad, one of their parents, that they must keep an eye on how much they earn and they should never try and earn more money that would push them to the, the, the next tax threshold. Because if they go up to that higher tax bracket, they would then have to pay more tax and they absolutely should not be paying any more tax. So they should not want to earn more. That sort of mindset 
means that you will never try to strive to earn more money because you're constantly worried that someone else has told you that's a bad idea and absolutely you shouldn't do it. But actually, if you think about the people in terms of wealth that you want to become, I bet the people that you want to be that are making 10K a month, that are making 15K a month, whatever it may be, that you aim to be like one day, they would not have sat and thought, do you know what? I can't do that. I I can't earn more money. I can't because then I'm gonna have to pay more tax. No, they're smart. They will look for the loopholes. They will look for ways that they can decrease their tax bill by putting their money back into their business, maybe moving to Dubai, whatever it may be. But I guarantee they didn't stop and think, I don't wanna make more money because I'd have to, sp- I have to you know, give more of it away. No, they're just smart about it. And there's a lot of advice. There is a lot, a hell of a lot of advice out there on in the media around people that you know, and also, um, you know, what we were taught in schools, that just once you start learning more and more about wealth building, about making money, it about investing even, it doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. For example, I'm not going to be speaking about stuff like this in this in this video. But you know, we were all maybe taught that we shouldn't invest because it's like gambling or maybe we should save our money in a savings account and all of this stuff that actually when you start diving in a little bit deeper you kind of unpack the reality of it and if you can't physically surround yourself with people that are making more money than you or people that are having more success within investing than you and maybe you are very new to the online scene and you can't connect with people like that online either so you've got no one in your physical life you've got no one online that you wanna surround yourself with. If that is you and you're brand new to this wealth creation journey, then either join a community of people, and I've I've got one myself, but this is not meant to be a plug. I will leave it in the description, obviously. But what you can do is just put on podcasts. Literally, surround yourself in the sense of constantly having podcasts of people that you aspire to be like in the background. When you're making your breakfast in the morning, stick a podcast on, of someone talking about how they made a certain amount of money each month and what they've done to get there. Put a podcast on of some really successful investing tips, whatever it may be, but absolutely remove the negativity within your life and replace it with people that you find inspirational. So the point of this one was just that we have been fed a lot of advice about investing, about building money, about managing money, about handling your finances, that actually is complete a load of rubbish, basically. And this ties quite nicely in with the next one. And it's this whole idea of mindset, rich mindset versus poor mindset, scarcity mindset versus abundance mindset, limiting belief versus non-limiting belief, growth versus fixed. All these things are so important. And for me especially, out of everything that I've thought about in terms of making money and moving towards financial freedom, apart from the obvious of like, you need to kind of make some money to invest it and all of this stuff, the, the number one thing that I see as my biggest problem, my biggest weakness, and I imagine a lot of you guys can agree as well, is actually just making that switch in your mindset and not having a limited mindset, actually understanding that there is a lot of money out there to be made. And just because some people are already rich, it doesn't take away from the fact that you can get to a place where you're financially free as well. Now, fixed beliefs are things that we definitely probably all see in our family and friends. These are things like they believe or even you believe. And if, you, if you're if you one of these people, absolutely try and change this. I'm in the process of doing it myself. But you might believe that financial circumstances are kind of just unchangeable. They are what they are. You were born into a certain lifestyle, a certain family, and you can't really change that. So if you're poor, you're poor. That's it. You know, if you haven't got a good job, you haven't got a high paid skill, that's it. Can't really do much about it. It is what it is. And you're just kind of at the mercy of everyone else. And you're just going to have to suffer with that. That would be a very fixed belief. Another poor mindset kind of thing would be short-term thinking. You know, constantly seeking immediate gratification, constantly looking for impulsive ways to spend your money to try and maybe make more money instead of actually, you know, analyzing your risks, taking it really seriously and having a long-term mindset. This is especially important, obviously, when it comes to investing. We've also got the fear of failure. The fear of taking on risk and the fear of judgment on others, rejection, concerns about other people's opinions, maybe we're worried about making a mistake. These are all things that absolutely will hold us back. And the most successful people, take Elon Musk, for example, I bet you, and you know this yourself, of course, 
he he was never someone sitting there thinking, oh, but, you know, oh, I can't do that. I can't. I can't build a, a good EV company because what if people laugh at me? What if I make a mistake? What if I fail? No. Get out of that mindset. And this is the biggest one for me. I am always so concerned and so worried about the what ifs that it just stops me doing things. And that's like one of my biggest goals this year. I need to become a doer rather than a thinker. Thinking is important, but I absolutely have to take action as well if I ever want to get anywhere. And then just this scarcity mindset, which I've kind of already touched on, but but the idea that money, uh, success, all of these things that maybe you're looking for in life are limited resources. If people have already got them, then you should be jealous of them um, because you know you can't get them if someone else has got them. Absolutely not true. You should look to learn from people that are in places that you want to get to. Get rid of jealousy, very, very negative emotion, obviously, and just focus on yourself and work out how you're going to get there because you absolutely can. The next one is very interesting. It's one that has been popping into my mind more recently, I would say, and it's the whole idea of spending money to make money, which sounds so counterproductive. And I was definitely, this is definitely not something that I've ever thought about before, especially in like childhood and growing up. Never would someone have said to me, you know, speculate to accumulate, spend money to make money. Like it doesn't make sense. No, if I got money, I save that money. Because if I spend that money, the money's gone. (laughs) No, that is not how it works. Actually, what you can do, and one of the most valuable things that you could probably ever do, is use some of your money to, two things actually I'm thinking about now, use some of your money to start buying back your time in the future, i.e. invest in. And maybe even more importantly, I would say this is more importantly, even though I'm massive on investing, is using a good chunk of your money to invest in yourself. What does that mean? That means upskilling. That means learning skills that are, you know, it's these skills that people will pay you to know about. People, the skills that are high in demand that you can learn. You can upskill yourself and then get a better job. I'm not even just talking about online businesses here. This is anything. Pay for courses spend money on good quality courses from people that you trust so that you can learn what they know in the easiest, fastest way possible. Paying people to tell you information that they already have gone through many, many years actually accumulating to share experiences with you from people that you can actually really learn from. And this is a mindset shift because some people will think, I don't wanna spend 500 pound on a course or upskilling myself. But other people, and they'll think that that's a waste of money and that £500 could go towards going out for a nice meal or whatever. £500 would be a very nice meal, actually. But other people, and this is often the people that go on to really make a lot of money, is that they will think, they will have the mentality of actually, I can spend £500 and get all this insight and all this information, and then I can use that to make me £10,000 once I know what I need to do because I've learned it through this course or this guide or whatever I've purchased online or you know I've gone to this class, whatever it may be. And that's a shift because often people just don't wanna, don't wanna invest in themselves in the correct way because they don't wanna part with the money. But you've gotta think, what could that actually get me in the future? It leads to this whole idea of the biggest investment is always in yourself. This next one is definitely one that can be applied to many things. It can, it can be applied to your everyday life in terms of self-improvement. It can be applied to making money online. It can be applied to just your everyday nine to five job, like whatever it may be. And this is something that I've definitely, it, it's been in my mind and I've got better at it, a hell of a lot better at it since making videos online, for sure. And and you've heard this phrase before, but I'll break it down. I'll break down exactly what it means for me and what I'm doing. Work harder, not smarter. And this really links to an idea that you've definitely heard, which is try to stop trading your time for money. And for a lot of people, myself included, you do have to trade your time for money until you get to a certain point and you can start moving away from that. But work harder, not smarter. What does that mean? Well, that means stop working on things that aren't actually making that much of a difference. It's this whole eat the frog thing in the morning. It's this whole work on the 20% that will mean an 80% increase. What does that mean in, in, in real world? Well, it means if you've got many tasks, you could sort of move through all of them and make a 1% gain, make a 1% uh, better in your business, whatever it may be. Or you could work on the thing 
that is going to take you 20% of the time that you have, but actually it's not going to make a 1% improvement. It's going to make an 80% improvement. How do you do that? How do you work smarter, not harder? Well, you look to streamline things. You look to bulk tasks together so you're not constantly jumping between different areas. You use automation. You use AI. If you're not using AI to make your daily life easier right now, I don't know what you're doing. Absolutely jump on that. Use automation when you can. Free up as much of your time so that you can work on the important stuff. This, and just remove all the little pointless things. If you've got a lot of to-dos on your list that are really not going to make much difference, just make the decision whatever it needs to be done, get it done. Like don't put loads of effort into it and just move on. Work on the thing that is actually going to make the difference. And then like we were saying earlier, if you've got lots of things to do that you don't need to do yourself and your time could be better spent elsewhere, just pay someone to do those things if you're in a position to do so. But obviously the work harder part of it is really important as well. You need to work harder too. You need to be able to offer value in some way and solve someone's problem. That is how all the successful people become successful. That's how all the wealthy people get wealthy. Most of the time, two things happen. Either someone is really, really um, consistent with investing. They might either invest into an ETF and they do it for 50 years and then they reach financial freedom and they work a nine to five whilst doing so to have the money to invest. They upskill themselves, they get higher job, uh, they get promotions, get paid more, invest more, you get the idea. Or they invest into maybe a few different stocks rather than an ETF and they really focus in, they don't diversify and that's how they make their money. Or they build a business. They build a business. They do something else. They do an online business. They, whatever it may be, they they solve a problem for other people and people will pay them to do that because they're high value. Now, the next one I've kind of already touched on. I don't know why I did that. So we'll just go through this very, very quickly. But how to actually build wealth in terms of investing, diversification versus not. I made a whole video on this, so I'll leave it linked on the screen now. But what we see, early wealth, so building wealth early on in your life is always pretty much made by not diversifying, by actually concentrating and focusing and going all in on one thing, whether that's in an investing portfolio or whether it's in business. Hold true for both. Concentrating down is wealth creation. Diversifying is wealth protection. Remember that, but go and watch my whole video on it. You never see someone start 16 different businesses and then just hope one takes off. No, the people with successful businesses and the people that have made a lot of money and reached financial freedom early on, they go all in on one idea. And if that doesn't work, they move on to the next one. But if it absolutely does work, they power through, they go all in, focusing on one idea, they don't diversify. It's the same with a lot of investments uh, where a lot of money's been made and investing early on as well. The next two I'm actually gonna do together because they go hand in hand really nicely. And the first one is follow the money. And the way I'm gonna explain this one is by using an example that you can definitely relate to. We heard from our banks and a lot of big banks around the world that actually cryptocurrency is a scam and they were doing what they could to make sure that we didn't invest into it because cryptocurrency couldn't be trusted and we might lose all of our money. You may have seen it yourself where actually you weren't allowed to transfer money from your bank into a cryptocurrency platform. There were limits. It was really, really difficult for anyone during that time that was investing into cryptocurrency. But what was happening behind the scenes is those same banks that were stopping you investing into cryptocurrency were actually buying a massive amount of crypto themselves. Think about why that would have been. Money doesn't often lie. So it's really important to follow the money. And then the next one is that money makes money. This whole idea of the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. This kind of ties back to what we were saying before, but don't let this make you angry. Instead, use it to your advantage. Think about why that is happening. What are those people doing that you're not? And use your money to make more money and then use that money to make even more money and continue to do so. This cycle can keep repeating itself. Your earnings, your money can compound over time. We've heard it before, the eighth wonder in the world is honestly compound interest. And often this requires some level of risk, especially if you want to fast track it. And then we've got this other one that everybody has heard of. Some people believe it, some people don't. And I'm sure I'll get a lot of people in the comment section for and against this one. And it's this whole thing that we've been told, like systemically even, 
everyone must own a house. You are losing money renting. All you're doing is putting your money into someone else's pocket and you should absolutely be built, like buying your own home instead. You know, why would you pay a monthly rent to a landlord instead of building equity in a home for yourself? And I agree. You know, someday I absolutely want to own my own home. But I also think it's a really good idea to be open-minded about this and think about whether it's a smart financial decision for you. Because quite often, people buy a home with the intention to make money from it, to have an asset that will increase in value that they can sell at a higher price at a later date. Now, this point is not applicable if you are buying a home for the pure purpose of raising a family in that home and having a nice place to live. If you don't see it as an investment at all, then you can ignore this one. But if you do see it as purely an investment and you think that someday it will lead to a substantial profit, that doesn't always happen. But do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And now let's round off with this idea of cash is king. I think this is an absolute lie and I'm gonna tell you why. That rhymed, I like that. My opinion is that having a load of cash is not as good as putting that cash into income generating assets. If you just have literally a pile of cash under your pillow in your house or in, a, in a, um, an account that isn't really doing anything for you, that cash, that money is being eaten by inflation. It's becoming less valuable as time goes on. It is way better to take some of that money, and I'm not saying all of it because you absolutely need an emergency fund. You need to be able to liquidate some of your money very, very quickly if you need it, but have some of that money that you actually use to buy assets. And tied to this, and I was having a conversation with this uh, about this with my dad actually, because we were at a coffee shop the other day and he wanted to pay for our coffees and he got out his £10 note he, he couldn't pay because the coffee shop was not accepting cash anymore, which meant that I had to pay, unfortunately. But, you know, I'm so nice that I did it. But this triggered me to start thinking about, you know, and I rambled on to him. I don't know if he really cared, to be honest, but I rambled on about all the changes that we're seeing and how cash is dying out. You know, cash is being replaced by card and then we've got blockchain technologies coming up and that will be the new thing. Also think about this. If you went to your bank right now and you wanted to withdraw your entire bank balance, you wouldn't be able to, or at least you wouldn't be able to easily without jumping through a load of hoops first. Why is that? Well, it's because they don't actually have that money ready to give you, but also it does make you think that cash isn't necessarily king and it's probably better to have your money in income generating assets. I'm gonna leave it here because I feel like I've been rambling on for quite a while, but do let me know in the comments some thoughts about wealth generation, about making money, building money, financial freedom that you may have been having or if any of these have triggered thoughts of your own in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another video very shortly.